some guys. It's Mike Chun where I am now. Welcome to my YouTube channel and most of all, welcome to the eleventh episode of uh, Gothic One, the playthrough of Belayar. In this particular episode we're gonna go to the subterranean temple of the sleeper and get ourselves a Yuritsi or the sword and uh, see if we can convert it into a rune. So without further ado guys, let's begin. I still need mm, 30 learning points, I think. Um, but uh, the only thing I'm gonna do here with Zardas is one, get out of here. And uh, two is get myself uh, some uh, summoning spell scrolls. So I can later show you guys how powerful this actually is when it comes to XP exploiting. I'm seeking magic knowledge. Yes. The only uh, spell scrolls that I will keep for personal use um, for areas like the Sleeper's Temple is going to be the Army of Darkness. Of course I will summon these as well, since I don't have the room yet, you know, I need room for Ripple of Death. But, um, I will use these, but uh, as soon as I do have the Ripple of Death, I'm gonna use these three to uh, summon them. First all the skeletons, then all the golems, and then all the demons. I use Wave of Death to kill them basically and claim their XP while keeping army of darkness for you know the subterranean temple but uh, this is gonna take some time I have quite some stuff to sell I think especially to reach at uh, 20,000 so just give me a bit here and uh, we will continue uh, shortly So let's go to the subterranean temple of the sleeper, also known as Kushak. Which is Orkish for sleep. What a boss, he dodged it. I 
once this game has been beaten, guys, the path of Balear, I will continue to go to uh, the path of Balear Gothic 2. And uh, as soon as I'm at this moment that I'm playing this game, I'm also currently playing the third run, uh, well, the uh, second run of Gothic 2, uh, damn it, the second run of Gothic 3, the path of Enos without commentary, I do those at the moment, but uh, I'm not really in the mood to charge them, slash, it's, it's too late for commentary parts, you know. So I will do that one as well, so that one is coming too. Um, all of this is done due to the fact that I really want to play Forsaken Gods, but um, I'm kind of looking against it, you know, Forsaken Gods is not really one of my favorites personally, um, but of course I still have to do it just for the Gothic series' case, but um, since I'm currently not really in the mood to play it yet, I'm doing the second run of a Gothic 3 and the third run of Gothic 1 slash Gothic 2. So that uh, those three parts will eventually be done as well and then I can finally say, you know, I've made some progress because at my last YouTube, um, I had pretty much everything done um, from Gothic 1 to Gothic 2, all three paths done. Um, Risen 1, all three paths done. But, uh, you know, it got hacked and uh, re downloading it and uh, re uploading it to a newer channel, this channel, was a bit uh, too much, you know, so I had to redo certain things. And, uh,. At that time I was live streaming, you know, which was the first run. Currently cannot live stream anymore, which is the main reason why Gothic 3, the path of Adenos, went from live stream to gameplay, you know. Um, but all in all, you know, all three paths will be done in Gothic 1, in Gothic 2, in Gothic 3, in Gothic 3 Forsaken Gods, and in Gothic 4. Um, even though Gothic 4 is, you know, not really part of the Gothic series, but it has some connections. So uh, let's talk to Urshag, see what he has to say. Urshag, greet friend. Friend have Ulumulu. Be good. Friend no forget carry Ulumulu in hand when go over bridge. How you doing, my friend? Ursak be healthy. Ursak now looking find own Ulumulu. Maybe Ursak go home with own Ulumulu. Friend come when need help. Take care. What are you doing so close to the town? Ursak watch brothers in home. Ursak believe Krushak awake soon. Ursak wait here. Fight Krushak when wake up. The sleeper will wake up soon? I hope you're wrong. Considering all I've heard of the Archdemon so far, I'd prefer him to be asleep. At our last meeting, you told me that your brothers had sealed the temple. Urshak brothers sealed temple in Earth. Very good. Friend, no can go in. Friend use magic from brothers who be sons of spirit like Urshak. Where can I find this magic? Must go in caves of brothers who be sons of spirit like Urshak. But friend must watch out when use magic. Brothers of Urshak no like. Ulumulu no help when friend use magic. All right, so let's go, guys.
I'm the champion. I'm I'm the champion. Get these chests for the supplies. So here we go guys, the subterranean temple of the sleeper part 1. Ninety percent of this area. The only one that I cannot do is the mortal shaman and beyond.
Oh yeah, right, the switches. From lowest to highest, Enos is the lowest god when it comes to magical capability, you know. Enos was basically the first and thus the lowest before the circles were divided. This is Adenos, the second one. Which is a bit of the balance, you know. Baliar is the highest, but also the most evil one. what the sixth circle mostly allows your character especially in gothic 2 gothic 1 you know the sixth circle doesn't give anything for enos whatsoever um the highest that you can become as a servant of enos as a fire mage is circle 4 which is one of the reasons why i took the templar as a, a servant of enos because the templar becomes the paladin you know to, to make things a bit more easier, let me put it this way, you know. Um, the Templar first joined the set camp because he really wanted to have freedom, no matter what it takes. And at some point, you know, they figured out that the ones that they are worshipping to is not the way it's supposed to be. Wait, what? Okay, I might pick the wrong one. But, uh, you know, from that point onwards, he is gonna dedicate himself towards the Eagles. While this guy starts as a fire mage, he's gonna dedicate himself to Baleor, because Baleor is higher knowledge. Baleon's power, Adonis's wisdom, and uh, Enos's courage, basically. Just put things a bit, you know, blindly. Pick up the 
swords and then I'll add the uh, death. Didn't I already die once? I'm not entirely sure, should that be the case, you know, make sure to uh, note in the description so I will automatically update the amount of deaths. Or you guys wait till I make the timestamps, then uh, I will also update the deaths if required. Because it could be that sometimes I, you know, take a death too many, sometimes I take a death too less. You know, it depends. Sometimes I'm a bit uh, forgetful. But that's fine, you know. It's not about, you know, how many times did I die, it's just for you guys to give you, uh, you know, a um, basic line on how many times did I die, you know. About, you know, could be more, could be less. You are dying! You dare to disturb my peace? Prepare for the end! It remains to be seen whose end it's going to be, you worm-bitten meatloaf. Goodbye. Now, never sell their staffs. Never. Just keep it. Because you need it. Well, that was a one shaman. Three more to go. Four. But the last one, the fifth. Uh, the fifth one is immortal. You cannot die unless you have either the Eurythial sword activated or if you uh, destroy the activated Eurythial and created a rune out of it. He's, uh, you, you could say immune to normal weapons. circle of magic which is uh, more required basically the same you know Enos, Adenos, Balea but uh, there you could use this moment to grind a bit of a bonus XP as I like to call it in my other two playthroughs I didn't show this tactic um, and since I still need learning points to train my character I might as well show you guys now, it could be that I take wait no no that's a different one these are just activating. So I think it was a different one or I'm confused. Which is also a possibility. But there was a spot where you could almost spawn them indefinitely. Almost. You know, not, not quite. But these 
are just activate and don't this isn't in a proper order. of the master damned be you you be damned you stinky moldy carpet out of four that we can kill and two out of five including one that we cannot kill clear them quickly without the need to fight um, use death to the undead I use that with my Templar playthrough but uh, since this guy is gonna be a belly our servant <laughs> he, he will not be allowed to use fire runes or ice runes you know because it doesn't represent it it's god This is one of the locations where you need either a bow or a crossbow. I'm Mortal! Your travels end here with me! I'll send you traveling first, you moldy maggot's idea of paradise. Good boy. third out of five in total and a third out of four in total that we can kill 
So let's go to the last one. Well, the semi last one, but the last one that we can kill, and then the immortal one. Oh, this is the one where you can uh, spawn in about three times a uh, demon. I think it was three times in any rate. Let's, uh, let's test it out for a bit. I'm not gonna extend it too long, but uh, let's see how many we can actually spawn. Because as you can see, you know, it's again Enos and Nos Balea. Should you want to uh, find the location of what it is, just activate the two switches and will go down entirely. You can see it right there. But uh, let, let's see how often I can get this demon. Instead of Adonis, I'm going to Balear. Some nice free XP. I have enough to uh, get my final circle. But uh, I think you can also spawn them indefinitely, you know, just by keep picking the wrong one. But uh, eventually they will, sp at least I think, will stop spawning. Now since I'm gonna use the XP exploit anyways to the fullest extent, unlike the other paths, I really don't need the XP of these uh, demons, even though it's a nice amount of XP. But... Alright, that immortal bugger. Prepare to meet. Uh, oh. Prepare to meet your creator, guy. Put the weapon down. Put the weapon down. Put the Get lost! You aren't wanted here! And you are gonna stop me? Yes, I will stop you! You won't prevent Master Callum from awakening the sleeper! 
Don't try to attack me! The High Priest has transferred part of his powers to Master Callum and us. Now we are immortal! I'll show you how immortal you are. Prepare to meet your creator! Prepare to meet your creator. <laughs> Say hello to the kingdom of Belial. Into it, they can damage. Never show your face here again. What kind of him? He's letting me heal. But I must say, chain lightning is not really that effective. The only thing it does is stun for a while. But, not really worth it. Fourth. Chain lightning is a bit bugged here. Let me first go to this side and then to that side. I need to go this side to activate one of the switches in order to be able to go to the immortal shaman. Even though I cannot beat him, I do have to go there. Activate the wrong one. To be honest, there, there is no really a wrong one. That is the one that you actually need, and this is the one that will open the uh, treasure gate. Or well, this one was the correct one. No, no, no. This was the uh, treasure gate, I think. Yeah, see? The treasure gate. Oh, or not. 
And the other one was the treasure gate. So if you don't want crutches, use that one. But uh, I always activate this one because it will give me access to a troll axe. Which I will wield at some point. Or Thoris's weapon, the Wrath of Enos. Nah, that's the weapon though. Technically speaking, the uh, Wrath of Enos is a uh, consecrated sword of the Paladin. So, you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't make sense if I would wield it. So I'm gonna wield the troll, the troll fist, which is a uh, dual a bladed axe, a battle axe. Just nearly. I rarely use them. Up we go. <laughs> uh, are you serious right now? Like ready? Gothic and its glitches, guys. No need to do that. So let's go to the fourth shaman, where we all will also find the blade of Eurytseal, which we will later convert into the powers of the necromancer, the ripple of death. Well, come then, smart bonds, where are you? Come then, I'll show you. show your face here again because she did and your head is glitched in the wall let me first get the mine crawler eggs not that I need it but uh, you know why not I have the more uh, summoning spell scrolls that I can purchase uh, slash all and uh, the more the ripple of death can do its work because uh, this guy might be low in mana right now but it's gonna be uh, so massively OP I think it will uh, level me up about six, seven levels easy. Seven is a m maybe a bit exaggerated, for because the, the higher your level is at that moment, the harder, you know, the more learning points, well, XP it takes to actually level up, so that depends. But should you do this early game, well, you can't, you already have to approach process through the game 
But if you can get here on a low level, let's say um, about level 10, then in a, it will surely give you way than more enough XP to uh, get from level 10 all the way to about level 20, 21, easy. Well, level 10 at this point, circle 6 ready, and it's a tough challenge. But then your character's level in overall will be lower because my current character is uh, 29. I am now capable of getting my last circle and I still need two handed weapon which is gonna cost me another seven levels. So I'm not quite done yet. relatively close to the end of the game now basically. The only thing that I have to do is get the Eurythial, which is over there. Um, get it, kill the shaman there, get the Eurythial, go to Zardas. He will ch tell us, you know, to go to his old tower, get the runes of the fire magician, kill Gomez, and uh, which is gonna be used with Army of Darkness. It's gonna be so beautiful. Lots of death. And uh, after killing Gomez, all we have to do is recharge your ritual and create the ripple of death. Which I could also use to, uh, with Gomez, man, you know, just wave for death and goodbye. But we will see. But I, uh, think I will use Army of Darkness for that little purpose. Uh, the more mana I have before I start the uh, whole XP grinding, the better. Because the more I have to recharge, the longer it takes, you know. Summoning, summoning, potion, summoning, summoning, potion. Maybe if it is summoning, potion, summoning, potion, it's gonna take a decade, you know. If it's summoning, summoning, and then potion, it's gonna take a bit less, but if it's summoning, summoning about five times, and then a potion, it's gonna be so much faster. Because uh, for my uh, Ripple of Death experiment, I'm gonna summon every skeleton, Ripple of Death, every demon, Ripple of Death, every golem, Ripple of Death, and then claim their XP, and uh, use the XP for a mana increase. Because uh, even though it's the uh, official ending of the game, you know, where we're gonna beat the sleeper before that, we're gonna get so many permanent potions, guys, it's gonna be madness. So I really don't need it, but it's gonna be so funny. The only thing I want to show you guys is how powerful the Ripple of Death is, and how easy the Ripple of Death in combination with the XP exploit is. Not because my character's gonna need it most likely not by the time that I'm at that point my character is basically 9 out of 10 already maxed in this particular case not well because um, this guy needs about at least 50 dexterity which is gonna be easy with all the potions he's gonna need about 100 mana 
Uh, his two-handed has to be mast mastered. Bow and crossbow are insignificant. Opening locks are already mastered. Picking pockets is booked in this game, so it's kind of insignificant. At least in a Gothic 1 and Gothic 2, it's going to be a bit more purposeful. And uh, one more magical circle, which is another 40 for the, you know, the two-handed. It's going to cost me about 70, so that's 13 levels. I'm going to say it correctly. 7, uh, about 11. 11 levels in total so that I still need. killed me. But here we have Eurytiol. Uh, Eurytiol is the treasure of the Chromanian books, but uh, the orcs beat you to it. That's why the quest is called The Stranger. It's about the uh, the guy that was following the clues, was following the clues of the guy that wielded Eurytiol. Zardas is found dead, took his armor and uh, forgot to salvage it, fortunately. Which we're gonna get, which is the uh, magic ore armor. I'm not quite sure who it was, was it the ore baron or something, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Well, the wield of Eurytio was uh, quite a powerful guy, I think. The ritual itself is very strong. The blade is 30 strength requirement, and if you charged it, it's about 120 damage, which is nice. But uh, this guy's gonna, you know, consume the gem and make a rune out of it. And this guy in Gothic 2 is also the only character in my Gothic 2 playthrough who will wield and use the Claw of Belial. Because only as a servant of Beliar am I allowed to pray at Beliar shrines. And in order to activate the claw, you have to pray at Beliar shrines. <laughs> surely do damage. And I think the uh, Eurytial Blade is the Claw of Ballet on Gothic 2, but I'm not quite sure. <laughs> I doubt it is fine. Powers are kind of similar. Even though the Claw of Belial, you know, leaves behind a electric jolt. But uh, other than that, they're both low strength requirement weapons with a lot of damage. You'll be very sorry for that. Fuck. Fuck, man. Fanatic Templars. All of them will be sent right to the Kingdom of Belia. Roll 
fist and a couple of permanent potions. So uh, I still need either 10 or 20 learning points for the first level of two-handed but that is only because of the fact that I mastered one-handed. If you mastered one-handed and you train the two-handed it's going to be more expensive. Same with the bow. If for example you know your crossbow is high maxed but your bow isn't, I think it's gonna then cost a bit more because it's kind of the same but uh, it's the opposite crossbow, bow and mana aka magic requires dexterity The higher your dexterity as a mage, the faster your casting time. At least in uh, a Gothic 1 and Gothic 2. Gotta love the boogeyness of this game. Alright, so here we go guys, the immortal one. You must turn back here! Nobody may disturb the sleep of my master! Wrong. Your sleeper will be wide awake soon. <laughs> Damn! I'm not causing the slightest damage. I need another... Now! You will die! I better get out of here fast. Alright, so let's go to Sardis. Before I have to activate Eurizio, I will have to make sure that I'm at least done with the water mages. Because uh, they're not gonna be happy. Since they want to use, you know, the magical ore to detonate the barrier, 
if they will see me usurp the power by uh, converting the magical energy of the ore into my blade, well, they don't think that's quite slow. Because it's not the way they think. because I come back here anyways. But I do want that stuff. Let's see, do I have Cherokinesis? Nope. Then I will go into this area the hard way, the Balear way, killing all the orcs. But um, mm, let me reactivate my magical runes to uh, Zardas and the Water Mages. Uh, sack camp needed? Don't think so. So let's go to Sardis. I have found a way into the underground temple. You have? That's remarkable. You have become very powerful. Stronger than anybody else inside the barrier. Maybe you really are the man the orcish prophecies told of. Prophecies? What prophecies? Ancient orcish documents written shortly after the sealing of the underground temple mention a holy foe. A holy foe? Someone who shall come to drive the sleeper from our world forever. I am supposed to be the one mentioned in the ancient prophecies? You must be wrong, surely. Maybe, maybe not. I found this strange sword. Show it to me. That's interesting. It has Eurizio written on it. I've heard of this sword. It's a weapon from the olden days, when the human race was still young. The weapon was forged from an unknown material, and there's nothing written about who created it. This blade was said to possess unbelievable powers, but I don't notice any magical aura. It's one of the blades created in uh, Nordmar. Eurizio possessed unbelievable powers? It was written that the owner of the weapon was able to pierce the strongest armor and to overcome even the most powerful of protection spells. How could the orcs get this powerful weapon into their hands? It's claimed that the orcs took it from a powerful warlord. 
They didn't know how to use it, but they did hide it. But they didn't hide it well enough. Is it possible to restore the former powers of the weapon? You need a very strong magical source of power for that purpose. You mean strong enough to detonate the magic barrier with? About that strong. Besides, you'll need a very special magic formula in order to transfer the power. Give me some time, and I'll create the magic formula. Can you teach me? I shall raise you into the sixth circle of magic. Notice that only the most powerful magicians may join the sixth circle. It's reserved to those whose life is a sign. Your sign is the unification of the elements. The sixth circle enables you to use the magic of any rune. And don't forget, do not claim the power, but serve it. Greetings. Meanwhile, I'll be hunting around for better armor. The undead have made massive dents in my armor. You should go to my old tower. Your old tower? It sank below one of the eastern lakes during one of the earthquakes. The spires are still visible above the surface. There are still some artifacts inside it. I never made any effort to salvage them. How do I get there? I haven't been there since the earthquake, which means you'll have to find a way to enter it yourself. But take this key. It opens a chest in which I used to store some particularly rare artifacts. I'm seeking magic knowledge. Alright, so let me uh, quickly trade here. wasn't paying attention but you guys must have noticed and what I can make a bit of a loss all right so let's get the ore armor which is the uh, last part and then in the next episode I'm gonna kill Gomez Now Zardis' old tower is filled with the undead, about um, a couple of skeletons, about 10 maybe, and uh, about 15 zombies give it a take. Could be more, could be less, you know, but on an estimation.
could use my uh, summoning spells, but I'm gonna keep those for grinding. Because it's gonna be easy, all I have to do is cast a bit of magic. Let's see how chain lightning works on these zombies. Why did I get damage? I uh, still need about two side chambers, I think. Uh, well, we at least found the uh, ore and the um, armor. Sh uh, there should be either one or two more chambers like this filled with zombies. Let's kill these buggers, claim the XP. Uh, only one. Good. And uh, let's go back to Zardas. <coughs> So let's uh, get ourselves the letter to reactivate your ritual. Before I will do that, I will go to Gomez and uh, kill that bugger. But that's for the next episode. As I can see, you've found the ore armor. I found it in one of those old chests in the sunken tower. It belonged to the general who wielded your ritual in the battle against the Yorks. I hope it'll bring me more luck than it did him. Have you completed the magic formula to reactivate Eurytseal? It's done, but you won't be able to use it by yourself. Why not? It has to be spoken by a magician while you touch the power source with the sword. Then I'll have to look around for some support. Take the formula and restore the sword's former power. You'll need it. Since I'm a magician, it'll be hard for me to wield Eurytseal. There is a solution, but first you have to restore the blade's former powers, then come back. Alright, so anyways guys, I want to thank you guys for watching, and if you like what you see, thumbs it up, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell, and leave behind a positive comments behind if you didn't like it, uh, which is also possible. Feel still free to uh, leave behind a dislike comments, or a dislike thumbs down, you know, so uh, yeah. I hope to see you guys in the next episode when we're gonna kill Gomez and reactivate your ritual and uh, after that we're gonna you know XP exploit a bit and uh, once that is done we're gonna go to uh, the sleeper and kick that demon's ass so yeah I hope to see you guys next time and uh, have fun and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it so yeah see you guys next time <laughs>